G'day guys, welcome back. Welcome to pouring your heart out. And I'm gonna pour my little heart out today with some acrylic pouring. Just for a change, I don't think I've done one for a little while, a flip cup. I feel as if it's been a while since I've done a flip cup pour. So I thought I'd do one for you today. Now I've mixed up all my paints. I've got my usual glue and water mix, my 60% glue to 40% water. Um, I started one to one, like equal parts of pouring medium to paint, and then I adjust. Like the black and the brown were really thick. I had to add more water. This one was really thin. I had to add more paint. This guy here, burnt sienna. So they're all in Montmartre. That's the burnt sienna, that one. Uh, the dark brown one is the burnt umber. And this sort of mustardy color is the yellow ochre or okra, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Um, I've got black and then this one here is a mixture of yellow and orange, just so it wasn't so bright. And the inspiration today is all those countries uh, overseas, hi everyone overseas, <laughs> that are in autumn or fall. So these are my colours. Um, here in Australia I'm in spring but you guys are opposite to me so I thought I'd do a little autumn or fall. Now this is silicone spray. This one is uh, three in one. I don't. I don't particularly like using the end of that. I just pop it down and I use the little spout at the top there, or a little nozzle, and I just give that a quick little spray. Shouldn't really do it over your canvas, but I am. A little quick little spray in there, and then a piece of paper towel, and just give it a, a good wipe up the sides on the bottom. And uh, that, I, I just think that that helps the paint to release. Otherwise you end up losing so much of it, you know, it gets stuck to the sides. So that's what I do. And then I just reuse my little piece of paper towel again. I keep it aside with my silicone spray. Right, so those are my colours. Cells today, as usual, I love it. Spot on treadmill belt silicone. Um, it's 100%. I buy it on eBay. It's pretty expensive to get it brought over from, I think it's from the States, but... It, you know, it'll last you. You only use a few little drops. I'm going to put three in each. I think I'll do the black as well. Why not? I'll do three in each. So these paints leave a little mound on a mound. They're, they're not a huge mound on a mound, just a little one. Make sure you close that again. Don't squeeze your bottle when you're dripping it out. Otherwise you get like 20 drops. Just let them fall out on their own. And mix it really really well if you don't mix it well um, you're gonna get like big blobs of silicone in your paint um, it's not the amount of mixing that will determine the size of your cells you need to mix the oil in really well to stop the big blobs of silicone appearing but then once you've got your cells that pop up after you've torched them then you, you stretch them out tilting your canvas so that's how you get big cells um, if your mix is too thin, when your cells pop up, they'll just kind of stretch and go all kind of wobbly. So that's an indication that your mix is too thin. On the other hand, if your mix is too thick, when you torch, you'll get tiny little cells. Um, they'll kind of be a little bit furry or blurry or hazy looking. They won't have nice, crisp, clean rings around them. Um, and then when you try and stretch them, they're really not going to stretch. They might just break. So it's just a little tricky to get the exact consistency you want. So just a little mound. Leaves a little trace on top for like two seconds. All right, we're stirred. Let's get going. So I've sort of gone light, dark, light, dark. Well, that's darker. But then that one's lighter than that one. And then again to that one. I didn't want to put the black next to the yellow because um, it kind of can make kind of a, a baby poo greenish color. So I've got the orange first and then the brown and I just like to drizzle it over the top. Don't hold it way up high otherwise it's going to fall straight through. Get as close as you can and um, just a little drizzle. You don't have to plop it in. Just try and drizzle it over the top so that you get your layers sitting on top of each other rather than falling straight through. That's the plan anyway. If you can't layer, you can pour down the side of the cup, you know, like, like that. It'll give you a similar effect. 
if you're just starting out and you're not experienced in layering paint by all means just pour it down the side gently and each layer will just sit on top of the other layer as well so that's not a problem I'm going to see if I can do three layers of black I'll see because black can really take over so I've made 50 grams of pouring medium and 50 grams of paint Oh, okay, we're going with another layer. Sometimes I do two layers, sometimes I do three. If I'm doing three cups, then I tend to get um, only two layers. But when I'm doing two cups, I layer them the same, but then I've, I've still got paint left over. But not enough to do two cups. I'll probably do one with one colour and then one with the other colour. And I'm just going to finish... Oh no, there's a little bit there. There's a little bit left. Bronte, what are you doing? <laughs> my dog. She's found my leftover silicone bottles and she's a bit scared of them. What do you think they're going to do to you? Hmm? Okay. As in silicone to make moulds enjoying making these silicon molds they're a bit of a challenge I must say with the resin if you don't watch me resining that's that's fine I don't know whether some people like like just watch the resin and then some just watch the acrylic pouring or maybe you do both I don't know now I've only got enough to do one cup so this one's going to have this color in it probably should have just done bigger layers but that's okay I scrape it out as much as I can. That's that one. Um, and then this one, that's too similar to that one. So I'll just put a little bit of this one in here. So there's not really enough. I should have just gone with the two layers, uh, yeah, two layers of each like I normally do. It's really not enough to warrant a third layer. Not really. Scrape it all out. Um, okay, so then you can have a little bit of black. I just poured a little bit of black on my corners actually, since I've got a bit left over. Don't want to waste it. You are going to have to go over your corners at some stage. So you might as well cover them now. It'll just make it a little bit easier when you do start tilting your canvas. And I like to use a corner catcher as well because when you're tipping your paint over, like most of it wants to go in one direction and you lose it off here and here <clears throat> before it goes over there. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I do like to use a corner catcher. But I'm just going to cover my little corners there. It just helps the paint flow over those that dry canvas, makes it just flow a little bit easier. Like so. I have the day off work today, so I might do a couple of pours for you. Maybe. See, when I do a resin, I can't upload the same day because obviously I need to wait 24 hours to unmold. So, but when I do a, a pour painting, I can you know upload straight away for you. So I might do a couple of those, and then I can clean up this work surface and uh, do a resin. Not sure what I want to do yet. I have to have a think about it. I've tried a few different things lately. I should probably spread everything out. I've got so many ideas that I want to do and I kind of do them all in one week and go, okay, I'm done. <laughs> What's the next thing? All right, that will do. Cover, just make sure it's a bit thinner there and we don't want any big mounds for it to have to run over smooth out your edges okay um tiny bit left pop it in all right let me clean my hands grubby hands and we will get this done get the show on the road as they say right um 
Now, I think what I'm going to do is instead of just flip, I'm going to do like a swirl or something. Oh, I've got a tiny little ring pour in there, a little straight pour. So I'm going to, just going to do one and then I'm going to go and like flip it somewhere and I'll do that one and I'll kind of do that just, just for something different. Oh, actually, you know what? Instead of being fall colours, these are more Halloween. Look at that. Shall we call it a Halloween pour instead? I was just looking at them through the side there. Definitely look Halloween-y, don't they? With the orange and the black and the brown. <laughs> Alrighty, well, depending on how it turns out, it's either a fall or a Halloween, okay? Okay, let's do this. And I'm going to take the cup right over the edge because I don't want to leave like a blob on the end there. Now I'm going to do that one that way. So there's really not much paint. I mean, there's always going to be a little bit of paint left over in there, but if you spray your cups, it's not going to be that much. All right, now let's do this one. I'll come around there somewhere. Whoops, I'm losing paint over the edge. Okay. A little bit left over. You can just go on there. Okay, that'll do. Let me throw these away. Oh, it's very dark. Let's hope we get some nice cells popping up underneath, eh? Hey? I think I'll just cover half of it first and then I'll torch. So I put my little corner catcher there and we'll go into the corner. Come back. Don't let go yet until your paints come back. And then this one. Come back. See what I mean about the black taking over? It's really dark. But let's hope we get some nice light coloured cells popping through. All right, now torching time. Oh my gosh, my hands aren't coming clean. The black, it's ridiculous. Okay, oh, it looks very dark and moody, doesn't it? I'm just using my blowtorch. I like this one, but I don't get too close. Otherwise you get the big, massive cells. Rather start up nice and high. You can always come down a little bit closer on your next round. Whoops. So you've got a bit close there and I've got some caterpillars popping up. Those are those long, like a, a row of cells all kind of stuck together. That's what we call caterpillars. My black is doing something weird in there when it's touching that, um, the um, yellow ochre. The yellow ochre may well be a transparent, not sure. Some colors react differently with when they hit a transparent, like a, um, an opaque and a transparent. Sometimes they'll split, especially the white. Whites are very known to split if you put them next to a transparent color, like a purple, for instance. They do tend to split. All right, I think that'll do. I can always torch again. Whoops, too close. <laughs> Oh, it's looking pretty though. But that, that black there, it's kind of got these, it's not a definite ring. It's got these like little wobbly bits all the way around when it's touching that yellow. So I'm assuming that's why. Right, let's uh, do some stretching of these cells now. Now I have to go over this side here and I'm not going to use the corner catcher because I want to stretch the cells out this time. So left and right, left and right as you head down. Go over there. Over there. <laughs> I don't know that it's looking very fall like. It's more Halloween. <laughs> All right. Uh, I like that. I really like that color, those color schemes actually. Um, I think I'll torch just a tiny little bit more up here, just there. Oh, don't hang, don't put your hand over the top of where over the top of your painting because I just dripped into it now. I was pointing to you and dripped. Very, very lightly just on that corner there. I don't want to overdo it so I'm being extra, extra careful. And a little bit here. It's a bit dark there. A little bit just there. 
mind having a few smaller cells that come up afterwards. And you have a oh look, at, oh, look at those. That's pretty. That's, I just needed a little bit of colour in that corner there. Oh, over there. So I'm just putting a tiny little sprinkle there. Watch them come up. See, they take their time. So don't over torch. Go over once and just wait. Um, they will come up. You just have to wait. I'm going to go over here. There we go. Just watch them. Watch them come up. Okay. Oh, I really like that. I was thinking it was going to be too dark. You know, I really don't want to do anything else to it because once your cells have popped up and you've stretched them, um, then um, if you tilt any more, you're just going to overstretch them. So just be really careful. Just getting a, a stick to clean underneath. Just run your stick along the bottom nice and gently. And that'll just catch all those drips along the bottom. If you leave them there, they'll kind of drag the paint down because they're heavy. They, whoops. Oh, I missed a corner there. It needs to be black though. Here we go. Where's a bit of black? There. Yeah, so just run your little stick or a palette knife or something underneath and catch those drips. Oh, I'm loving that, guys. Wow. I'm going to get you down for a close-up and get rid of these gloves. Oh, maybe I can, yeah, I'll have to keep them actually because I'll need to move the painting in a minute to take a photo of it. So I'll just take them off carefully, put them over here. It's always such a mess when you're using black paint. Always such a mess. Okay, oh, I really like that. I'm just looking at it from the back here. Even though I did like a whoosh there and a whoosh there, I've still kind of got two separate areas but in saying that I've got this cool little area down there where it's got that wave it's got a wave here but I still did you know two separate pores on there zoom you in and then I'll take you down I'm gonna be careful when I zoom sometimes it flips the other way and you end up doing a selfie <laughs> oh my gosh all right now let me turn the ring light off that's that. Otherwise, we're going to get a big glare. Oh, it's looking a lot more yellow through my screen. These cells, oh my gosh, you guys, these cells, a lot of them are amazing. Let me turn my other light off. Hang on. No, you can come with me. Walk this way. Um, sometimes the extra lights, they just make your, your painting look a little bit washed out. Is that better? I've got cells down the sides. Let's come around this way. It's still looking a little bit washed out to me, but anyway, it's because I've got the lights on overhead. I will take a photo of it and um, just adjust the color because it's, it's more, it's much more black. It's much more dark. Right, look at these cells though. Right, let's start up here. We have multi ringed cells. Oops, there we go. No, I can't have my autofocus <laughs> and change the color, it's going to have to just be a bit bright. Those little ones there are where I torched afterwards. Oh, there's a little face. Two little eyes looking at us. See my reflection in it. <laughs> oh, look at those. Multi-ringed. Aren't they pretty? Does look more yellow through my screen though. It's kind of a bit more more orange toned. And I can't show you the correct color. I think I like that half the best. That's my favorite. Some amazing cells there. 
those caterpillars that were on the side there, I managed to tip them off so they're all gone. That's what happens when you torch too close. You get a, like a hit of silicone coming up in a, in a row and um, they end up being all joined together, the, the cells. That's what I found anyway. If I torch up nice and high, I don't get caterpillars. But if I get too close, I get the caterpillars. And um, they're more likely, more prominent if your mix is a bit thicker on the thicker side. So there we go. Uh, I'm going to set it up for a photo. And uh, I'll show you the finished product at the end. Okay, thanks for watching, you guys. So nice to do another acrylic pour. Have you missed them? Let me know which you would prefer, acrylic pours or resin pours, or maybe both. All right, love you all. See you real soon. Bye for now.